prove that he can do it first. Don't forget, we're seeing uh, uh, Jay Bass tomorrow, and it's going to be fantastic. Phil Chaplin is here. Good morning, Phil. And White Sock Al, if you missed Phil's show last night, give me a break, man. He's phenomenal, so give Phil a listen on demand, okay? Uh, moving right along. Texas Rangers. The Texas Rangers over under is 78 and a half. 78 and a half for the Texas Rangers. The odds for the Texas Ranger team this year to, uh, let's see, here's the odds. Just uh, bear with me for a second. The odds for Texas to win the World Series. Uh, how come every time I look for it, I can never find it? I, I actually don't memorize the stuff. Here, Texas, 60 to 1 to win the. Now, this is a team that still may be in the running for Nolan Arenado. Maybe they're 30 to 1 to win the. Uh, yep, they'll be 30 to 1 to win the American League West. So let's see what they got. Let's see what they can do. Uh, Corey Kluber. He threw a live bullpen session on Tuesday, and that was his first time throwing to a batter. Um, he had an unsuccessful rehab assignment in August. He still, Kluber still, does not know when he will make his first spring training start. He felt good. Nice to get in there. All right. <laughs> yippee ki yay Feeling good, okay? One of the toughest players... Is Ruffnet Odor him with his 200 batting average, and he does not have an approach at all. So, in Odor and Elvis Andrus, the Rangers have $81 million tied up in remaining long term contracts. I got to tell you, you look around at the contracts, and some of these general managers are just stupid. I, I wonder if fantasy baseball owners. Uh, are really smarter than some of these general managers, okay? They've got to see some consistency for Odor. Ever since he signed a six-year, I think it was a $50 million contract before the 2017 season, uh, he has been consistently underachieving. And over the past three years, he has an OPS of uh, OPS plus of 78 and that's the stat that tries to uh dis, you know tries to take apart ballpark factors and other variables um okay to get, you know look the league average is 100 his is 78 so and there's 104 players with at least 1000 play uh, appearances and only two have lower OPS numbers OPS plus so look Odor has started 421 of the 447 games that he's been on the active, that's 94 percent. And but he's got to do something. He's got to do something. If Texas and they want to make an impact, if he wants to do something, he's got to do it now. Okay, uh, Nick Solak. He could be the center fielder for the first week of spring training, and they'll see what he does. And they want to make Danny Santana. Uh, more of a uh, utility guy. The plan is to have Solak start in center field in the exhibition game on Saturday. He wants to see a lot of Solak in center field. That is uh, the manager. And um, look, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if he makes the team. And Santana, who's not given a lot of respect. And also, there's a lot of talk about Demarcus Evans who's looking to make the MLB roster out of camp. He's a hard-throwing right-hander. He attacks hitters up in the zone. He's happy to see him come out of his... Look, he was he had a... He, he was 6-0. and Demarcus Evans. 097. This is Texas now. 097 ERA in 60 innings. Okay? So, uh, we'll see. They got, yeah, I'll tell you what. And even, even the fellow... Uh, uh, Taylor Hearn uh, with the Rangers don't have any idea how they're going to use him. Made his MLB debut, taken out, had an elbow injury. He's another hard thrower. The team is really not sure if he's going to be like a two-inning reliever or a starter. T 
Taylor Hearn. So, and, and, and then they trying to see the cleanup spot in that order, a traditional spot for a power hitter. Uh, the top third is really, uh, you know, where you have your role MVPs because you want to get them at bats. If the Rangers get to where they want to go, they've got to have Joey Gallo reach his tremendous potential. Okay? So, where are they going to bat Joey Gallo? Mike, remember, Mike Trout hit second or third. Christian Yelich hit second or third. Of the 10 MVPs in the last five years, nine have gone to players who took the majority of at bats in the top third of the order. Gallo, he hit fifth more than any spot, and they're talking now about moving Chris Gallo into the top third of the order. Okay? Chris Gallo. He hit fifth more than any other spot. And uh, he and he says he feels more comfortable, actually, batting um, uh, fourth or fifth, okay? Uh, a team's number three hitter averaged 33 more bats than the number five hitter. They've averaged 16 more bats than the number four hitter. And you want to get your best hitter, right? He had more, all right? You just want to get uh, your best. And, and they really believe he may not be their best hitter, but he's their most important hitter. And perhaps the biggest challenge is to convince Gallo that he not only is the biggest power threat, but he's the biggest offensive threat. So he can just... Uh, uh, and the plan the plan right now is to put him up number three. So let's see what happens. The plan is to put him up number three. And we'll see if that works out. Chinch, by the way, since you Chu turns 38 in July... And he says he'd like to continue playing past 2020. So uh, we'll see what happens there. As far as pitching is concerned, uh, Mike Miner, as real, I remember seeing Mike Miner in the Arizona Fall League. And I remember when Miner pitched in the All Star game. And he got blasted to the point that I actually felt bad for him, right? <laughs> I really do. I'm looking in the chat room and I can't believe how many. What, I mean, I can believe. And w this is just great. Thank you so much. Again, don't forget, tonight we got King Hap and we got Taco. Timmy Sawyer is here. Good morning. He was the first one in this morning, but that was about 5 o'clock in the morning. Unholy Toledo, Traveler, White Sox, Gal Zelmo. Just a great uh, chance to see everybody. Thank you so much. And say hello to Greg. Okay. <laughs> and so many people not here today. But you can't make it here every day, that we know. And thanks to Lou for coming in. All right, now, uh, Brooks should be here because the market's going to open with a plus today. Now, let's take a look at uh, at this uh, Texas team. Mike Miner, again, uh, he's more relaxed now than ever, so he says. Uh, the Rangers drive to end three consecutive losing seasons. Return to the postseason for the first time since 2016. Uh, look, uh, he's averaged 30 starts on 180 innings a season. Last year, a career high, 208 innings, 200 strikeouts. And his very last batter, by the way, if you remember. So they're really trying to get Mike Miner uh, into a position where he could really be a factor. Mike Miner would be a ter is a terrific pickup because he's going to get you the strikeout, get you the strikeout, and he look this Texas team has made an announcement. Unlike St. Louis and Milwaukee, uh, Texas has made a statement. They're really looking to win this year. So, and in a division led by the Houston Astros. We'll see if that's going to be any good. All right, so as far as Texas is concerned, that's what you got. Mike Miner's going to be a, a terrific pitcher this year. 200 strikeouts, go get him. Around the horn, looking at Texas around the horn, and then we'll give you an idea of what their prospects look like. Texas going around the horn, and, of course, Santana may get to play some first base. You may see some first base Santana, Okay. Uh, over at uh, yeah, and Ronald Guzman and Greg Bird 
and Sam Travis. They really are going to give Greg Bird a chance to do something. With Guzman, yeah, he looks the part, he feels the part, but he's not the part. Ronald Guzman this year, you really have to stay away from Guzman. He's just, uh, any time a team shows that they're so anxious to pick up other players at that position, uh, it's hard to focus in on Guzman. Now, for Guzman, uh, he hit 219 last year. 219. Guzman hit 219 last year. Uh, that in itself says a lot, right? I don't think he's going to hit more than 220 this year, maybe 230. 16, 15 home runs, that's about it. So don't even though he looks 6'4", he looks the part, he's not going to do it. Greg Bird, can't say anything about him. Rough that old door we talked about, Andrus. Todd Frazier, he could rebuild his, himself very easily. Todd Frazier, who I've always thought was a terrific third baseman, and Frazier's going to... Uh, he's going to get the third base nod at least for a time being. He'll hit you 240 with 21 homers, and that's Todd Frazier. The outfield, of course, we already mentioned. You got the uh, you got Gallo out there. We already mentioned since you chew out there, uh, and we and Danny Santana, Willie Calhoun. Look, he's made he, he's made a Leclerc is the is the is the closer, and with Kluber, Miner, Lance Lynn. Uh, Colby Aller, Jordan Lyles. All right, pick your spots. Not a lot I can tell you about these players that you don't already know. As far as the uh, Rangers prospects are concerned, uh, what do they have? Who do they have who could get a call-up this year? Let's take a look. Ranger call-ups. And don't forget, you got Josh Jung. A lot of teams want him. He's the first player named in Colorado when they want him. He's the first-round uh, selection, um, and he's he's a future third baseman. He's a, an advanced college bat at a Texas Tech first round into 2019 draft. But his defense uh, is okay. Uh, everything else is just about average. No reason that the six two, two hundred fifteen pound Josh Jung uh, may not be seen at the end of the year. Okay, we'll see. Uh, Leody Tavares is 21, okay, and uh, five tools, five tools. He, she could be, he could be. If you dream of tools, this is the guy. This is the guy. He hit 279. He had five homers, 32 at a 45 stolen basis last year in Double A. You could see Leotis Tavares in the second half. Nick Solak we talked about. Sam Huff at the catching spot. Breakout season of 2019. One of the top catching prospects. He had 28 home runs. Stole six bases out of 12 attempts. But still, as a catcher, this is the new JT Real Muto, maybe. Sam Huff. Okay. Um, as far as pitching prospects... Not a lot. Not a lot of pitching prospects. And Texas has always been a team that uh, was really, uh, you know, not uh, loaded with pitching prospects. I would say from uh, memory that uh, the top pitching prospect, uh, I, didn't re- I don't remember anybody standing out in the Arizona Fall League, but I do remember Cole Wynn, who, uh, who was pitching at A-ball, he had a really terrific, simple delivery, but um, he's, you know, look, smooth delivery. Understand why he was highly touted. Uh, his fastball's around 95, but very good delivery and command. So uh, just to say that Cole Wynn could be right there. Okay, we're looking forward tonight to the debut of the new show. He's no Andy Robustelli, that's for sure. Number eighty-one, Randy Roy. All right, here's the uh, here's the starting lineup for the New York Football Giants. The two, who is the other end for the Giants? Who is the other end? Rosie Greer was a defensive tackle. Look, he was the big guy. Remember Rosie Greer, 
who try to save the life of uh, 